love it when I start a video and I've already missed footage. So essentially what you've missed is this was a gessoed page and I used a couple of colors of smooch spritz and these are a pigment glimmer spray. And I was just using a couple different colors of blue and that red and then I sprayed them with water and it kind of modeled them a little bit and blended them together. And then once they were kind of dry, I sprayed the page with water and then using my towel, which is all rough from acrylic paint, which is dried on it, um, I just scraped it and scratched it for some cool background texture and then dried off the excess water. This is a uh, grill thing from the dollar store and um, it it was wavy. It was from the Dollar Tree. It was wavy and I ran it through my Big Shot with all of the the plates and everything but no dies and it flattened it out so yay hooray so and I used my dilutions white linen through that stencil just to soften it up a bit and these are Umwow Studio chipboard and uh, they they're very delicate because of the the very intricate design of the feathers so I didn't realize how delicate they are I don't end up breaking them or anything but they're or a couple times where I was like, I think I might have messed this up and I didn't. So so I just used gesso a little bit here and there just to change how the colors would look on the gesso versus on, straight onto the chipboard. And I'm using those same colors of smooch spritz again. And I got those from Tuesday morning. And um, I'm using iCADs just to pick up some of that extra color. I figure you've got all that color, why not? So so you can see where the gesso was, it's a completely different color. It, it kind of resists it, but it kind of doesn't. And then the chipboard just gets darker in those areas and you can kind of see the glimmer. And So it's cool. So I'm using my Donna Salazar Mixed Media inks in Barn uh, Schoolhouse, which was the red. This is the patina, which is that really pretty soft blue. And then um, I dried them mostly and then uh, covered them in distress embossing powder, or uh, distress embossing ink, and UT. And normally I only do one layer of UT because I like that funky, chunky look that it gives, but this time I wanted kind of a smooth enameled look so I did two layers of the distress embossing ink and then the UT and I overheated this large feather in one area so it got a little cloudy but that's okay um, I love my Ranger heat tool but I hate it for embossing it um, it's great for drying paint and working uh, with inks and stuff, but not so much for embossing. It just doesn't get hot enough for me. Um, so I'm using a Tim Holtz stencil and uh, that Donna Salazar Schoolhouse Red ink again. And I dried it, and it's good to go. Then, you, as you can see, I hot glued down those feathers. Then I went to my printer, or my computer, and I typed up this phrase says, I may never fly, but I'll die trying. Um, and I am using tumbled glass distress ink. I wanted to pull some of that light blue. I know it looks kind of green. It might look blue by the time you get it. I have a very small preview window, so. But it's it's a very light blue. And then dusty concord, which I thought would, would uh, complement the purple in the background. And let's see. Then what? I know I'm going to tear it. Oh, I'm using, I think, Chip Sapphire uh, Distress Ink and that Teresa Collins Dictionary Stamp by Fiskers uh, just to create some texture on this so it's not so plain. And when I did that, the edge of the stamp underscored trying for me. So I was like, oh, that's. That's actually kind of cool, because I'm going to end up using the top one, not this one that I'm tearing now. I spaced it all out, because I wasn't sure if I was going to use the words individually or the phrase together. And then I decided, eh, we'll just use the phrase together. 
as you can see, I went with that one. So then I'm tearing. I'm tearing all the sides toward me, so that way there's some raw edge that I can ink up. And doing the same thing with the middle. And then I'm just going to ink the edges. And I think I used that uh, chipped sapphire again. Distress ink. I really liked how the colors on this page came out. Um, I don't use red a whole heck of a lot, so I was like, "Oh, let's use red." I like I like red sometimes. So, which is funny because my whole house is decorated in red. I think that's why I try not to use red very often. I got burnt out on red, and then my sister-in-law wanted me to make uh, a couple canvases for her, and her color scheme was red and black and gray. And I was like, really? Really more red? Really? So she came over with this red paint. I'm like, girl, I already have that paint. I know, because I had to use it to make something downstairs for my red house. So we were redecorating our loft. And as you can see, I hot glued down the phrase, and then I'm going to distress ink around the edges. Or um, not distress ink, archival ink around the edges of this page. We we're redecorating our loft, and my wife's like, "What color should we do up here?" And it kind of like blends with like the red tones all the wood colors do. I was like, "Anything but red." So I think we're gonna go like purple and green. Don't ask. It'll look pretty. I promise. See now you're like purple and green. N not that kind of purple and green. Not like '80s cabin in. Backwoods, Tennessee. Sorry if you live in the backwoods, Tennessee, and you have purple and green stuff. So there you go. There's my uh, my art journal page. I may never fly, but I'll die trying. I love that Umwa Studio chipboard. It's just so pretty and intricate. So if you haven't checked out the Umwa Studio, you need to. Uh, this has some great glimmer and some shine, and it was a simple page. It took me maybe an hour total creating. So I hope you like it. Talk to you later. Bye.